Hey everyone, in this video we'll be covering the Conversations tab. Once you click on this, you'll see different sections here. Let's break them down and then discuss them individually. So in the first section, we see all the conversations. That'll have four different types of conversations starting from unread, which is of course the unread conversations, then the recent ones that have just come in, and you can also have starred conversations. So if you star a conversation, you'll be able to see it right here. Now, the way to do that is to click on any conversation, then click on Mark as starred, and then it'll show under the starred conversations. Then we've got the All tab. So, if you want to see all the conversations regardless of whether they came in recently or if they're unread, you can see all of them here. There is also a search bar here where you can search for a specific conversation. And right next to that is where we've got this filter icon. You can actually filter the conversations based on different things like the message direction, as well as the message channel. If you're going to apply a filter, just select your criteria and hit Apply. And if you want to go back and clear the filters, just click on that one more time, click on Clear Filters, click Apply again, and that's it. The filters have been removed. The section to the right is the View pane, where it maximizes the selected conversation. So, when I select one, it shows the phone number on the top. There are also a few options like archiving it, starring the conversation, marking it as read, or even deleting it. You'll also see the activity type drop-down selection, but I'll jump into that a bit later. Now, if you look downwards, you'll be able to see when the conversation started as well as the conversation history with the timestamps. Now, if you want to send an SMS to this lead, all you have to do is click on SMS at the bottom, and it'll maximize this window so you can type in your response here. Now please know that if you have more information stored like email, WhatsApp, Instagram, all that, you'll be able to send all those message types right here. Now when you're sending a message, you'll see that you've got a bunch of different options. The first one is attaching files where you can upload documents if you need to. You can also insert emojis to make your messages more visual and insert templates like snippets or text templates. Once you click on using a template, it'll automatically populate the text, saving you tons of time. Another thing you can do is request a payment right from the Conversations window. Please know that the contact must have a name before you start using this feature. So let's go ahead and try it out with another user. I'm going to pick this one right here, and then if I try to request payment by clicking on the dollar sign icon, you'll see that it allows me to send a payment request. You can easily add your line items as well as define the price and then also set an invoice due date. And once you click on copy link and mark as sent, it'll add a payment link with their name as well. And then it's just a matter of clicking on send. Now, as you can see, this user does have email information saved as well. So we can either send them an email or an SMS. Now, when you click on the more button, the plus icon right here, It'll give you all the system fields and custom values in the account. So you can use things like contact, first name if you need to. If you click on that, it'll automatically populate that here. And you can even use more custom values like appointments, start date and time if they do have an appointment booked. Now when you want to send a message, you can either send it right away, or you can click on this timer icon, and it'll allow you to schedule your messages, which is pretty cool if you need to send it at some future date and time. All right, so now if we have a look at the right sidebar, we've got these three little icons here. Starting with the first one, we've got contacts. So when I click on that, it'll actually display the content information of the lead you're talking to. So you can see multiple details like their content information, their tags, as well as what workflows they're currently in. You can also add or edit their name from here if you need to. Then if you click on the calendar icon, this is for appointments. If you want to book a person right away from the chat, you can click on book an appointment. And then it'll bring up this pop-up where you decide what calendar you want to book them in, and then you can also put in the appointment title, like a discovery session, and then decide the date and time. Once you're satisfied, just click on book an appointment. And then it'll generate an appointment for that person. After successfully booking the appointment, you'll start seeing them under Upcoming Appointments. You might also notice that the appointment details updated and will also be mentioned in the conversation history. No need to worry because this is not what's going out to the customer. This is an activity type. So, now back to the activity type, drop-down selection. 
So if I click on that and I filter it only for the SMS, you'll notice that now it's only displaying the messages that have gone out. Clicking on all will show you the activities as well. And anything that is marked with this icon is just an activity, which is for your view only, and it's not being sent to the customer. The only things that will go out are the messages or emails that would be a part of the automation sequence for booking an appointment. The last option in the sidebar is the opportunities icon. Let's say you want to add them to an opportunity or a pipeline. Clicking on that will give you this pop-up where you can actually decide what pipeline you want to add them to, as well as decide the stage. So let's say if you want to move them to booked appointment, you can do so. You can also define the value, assign owners and followers, and also add some more information like tags, business name, and opportunity source. Another option is to add or manage fields. You can also add custom fields to these opportunities. So if you click on that, it'll actually take you to the custom fields menu. And here, let's say if you want to add another field, which is not in the system right now, you can do so by selecting the type of input you'd want. For example, if I want to add an age custom field, what I'll do is select the number right here, click on next, and then I can define age here. Add them to the group contact and then hit save. Once you've created the custom field, it'll appear right here. You can also use it in the opportunity section. Now, going back to conversations, you'll see that we also have a menu up top. So we'd selected the conversations area before. Now let's move on to the manual actions. Now manual actions are certain actions that you decide in your workflows. So let me show you an example real quick. Let's say you have an automation where you have a manual action. So there are two manual actions right now, which is a manual action to SMS or a manual action to call. So what it basically does is it creates an alert or a task for you that, hey, this person has come in and you're supposed to call them as soon as possible. So these are the kinds of actions that if you create and somebody passes through them, you'll see them under manual actions for yourself. So let's test it for one of our users. And I'm going to hit test right now. And let's see if it does appear in the manual actions. So if I head over to manual actions right now, it has created a manual action for me that this person is supposed to be called. This way, you can keep track of all the persons or the leads that you have to call, and it will help you solidify your processes. Then, we have templates or snippets where you can actually create text or email snippets. Start by selecting an option, and the first thing you have to do is name it. Then, type in the text that you want here. You can also use custom values here to personalize this message. Once you're done, just click on Save. That template will then be saved here, and you can start using it in the Conversations area. Finally, the last one we have is Trigger Links. Trigger Links are really powerful because they allow you to map your previous links. Then, when somebody clicks on a link, you'll be able to track it, as well as build automations on top of it. So, if you want to create a trigger link, all you have to do is click on Add a Link, then paste your URL here where you want to track if people click on it, and then you can name it and click Save. Once you've done that, let me show you what you can do with automations using trigger links. For example, let's say we create a new workflow. So what I'll do is click on Add a New Trigger, then in the Search Triggers, I'll search for Trigger Link Clicked. Once I click on that, you have to click on Add Filters, and then select the trigger link. Then choose the trigger link that you want to test. Now, if you remember, we named it Test, so I'm just going to choose that one and then hit Save. Now, let's say somebody clicks on that link. This automation will start. And here, you can actually decide a different set of actions. So you can add a tag to that lead if you want to categorize them better. And then you can also perform more actions, like maybe sending an SMS and thanking them for opening that link or whatever was inside that. So this really allows you to create a very powerful automated sequence using the trigger links. Alright, so that's it for the training for the Conversations tab, and thank you for watching.